Hi ladies, it's May Larson here with Creating with Details and today we're going to be doing some angel wings and these particular angel wings are going to go to a dear crafter friend who needs some uh, uplifting and what I started out was with a 12 by 12 piece of chipboard and I traced around my pattern of my wing or not trace, I actually drew this in and I cut it out. Once I had it cut out, I took my piece of fabric that I wanted to use. Now this here is one of those quilters uh, batting that's already quilted up. And I will go in, place my, my um, pattern down like so, and make sure that you have the folded. This piece here goes along that folded edge. And um, just place it like so, and then start tracing. And I'm using just a regular pencil um, because this is going to be covered up um, anyway. Now, this project, like I was saying, it's for um, a fellow crafter who's going some really hard times. And I just thought I, she needed a lift me up kind of gift. And sometimes in our lives, you know, we get a bag of lemons. And my mom always said, if you get a bag of lemons, you, you're going to have to take that bag and make something with it. So what do we make? We make lemonade. And the sweeter the lemonade, the sweeter things can get. So I'm going to be making these for my friend. And we're going to um, use not only this, you can also use muslin and a felt piece um, and put it in between and sandwich it together. And for my other wings, I use some of this uh, florist wire and I put it in because I wanted my wings to be movable. So we're going to be doing that. You're also going to be using some um, lace trims or anything that you have at your disposal. I'm just going to be using things that I have in my personal stash and create these lovely wings for my friend. So once you have your pattern, all traced up on your fabric, you'll start cutting it out um, and you're going to take those two pieces that you cut out. Now this already has the batting inside so I don't need to put any felt but I will be putting that um, piece of wire in because I want these to be movable for her and she can attach this to any of her you know dress forms or if she just wants to hang it on her wall you know you name it, she can do whatever she wants with these little wings. Um, I just wanted to give her something to uplift her spirit. So um, sometimes not about taking. And um, it comes a time in our lives that um, if we can bless someone with a gift, gift, no matter how big or how small, it's, you know, it just reminds people that you're thinking about them. And I'm certainly thinking about my friend. Um, and I hope this really shears her up. Now, once I have all this done, I will take, and I'll use all those little scraps because I can use bookmarks on that. So now I have two pieces just like that, see? You open it up and you have two pieces. And I have that. And in my other um, wings, like I said, I use muslin and I had a piece of felt in the middle and then I use my wire. For this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shape my wire um, how I want it. And I'm going to go and take some hot glue and kind of position that where I want and um, get it going there. And that way it helps keep like helps those wings be more movable. And it, you don't have to glue all the way around, like in certain areas, like maybe every inch or so, just to get your, your wire to stay in place. And then I'm gonna have like maybe um, a quarter inch seam allowance. On the other one, what I did, I frayed out the edges because I like that shabby appearance to it. Um, on this one, I'm not going to be framed because, of course, it's um, quilters batting, but I will be um, finishing up those edges anyway. And once you start covering it up with laces, you're not going to really see those edges. So we're just going to kind of just touch it a little and shape it with, you know, along the edge, just like that and then you can just grab another piece of wire and just keep going around until you have your whole uh, perimeter of your um, 
wings done. And so here's my other piece of wire and I'm just going to keep, you know, shaping it around. Okay, hold that in place. Let it dry up. And you can go in and touch up where, uh, you know, where you feel that it might need a little bit more glue to hold in and make it more stable. Um, once you have it sewn in, it's not going to be a big deal. Trust me, because I, my wing's been around for about, oh, a year and a half, almost two. <clears throat> so we'll go there. Like I said, I'm going to have about a, a half inch, or quarter inch, sorry, not a half inch, but a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, so you want to make sure you leave enough for that and that you're, um, even if you get your wire in there, it's not going to be a big deal. Um, but make sure you have about a quarter inch seam allowance there. So, trick is, you know, because you're working with two hands, you know, it'd be neat if we were octopuses, you know, we can have all those little multiple hands going on, but, um, we're not, so we got to work with what God give it, gave us, and that we're going to do, see, so the, so once you have that, um, it, the wings become more movable, so you just have to do the one bottom piece, and then you just sandwich it in, um, with your other top piece. Kind of shape it. Keep going. Put some right there. Put it in place. So yeah. So when not when life gives you a bag of lemons, um, it's good to you know help your friend make some lemonade out of that bag of lemon, and just show them that you know we're not all the same. God didn't make us all the same. You know, some of us were born with blue eyes and blonde hair. Some of us has dark hair and, you know, some of, them, some of us are fair skinned. Some of us aren't. Um, but we um, have all different feelings. You know, some of us um, think one way. Another one might think the other way. But, you know, we're all loving people. And definitely, definitely, I know our group has a lot of loving girls that <clears throat> are willing to jump out and extend um, their olive branch when a fellow crafter is in need. And I'm, I'm certainly seeing that with, um, a group of ladies. And I certainly appreciate all those ladies that are jumping in for this. So super excited. And I think that's very meaningful that we can all assist a fellow crafter when they really need it most. So hold on to that one. And turn it around this way. And then I'm just going to go with the final straw of going around that corner with another one. So you're going to be needing like, and I think these are about 18 inches long. I'm not sure. But you get this. I picked these up at um, either Hobby Lobby or Joann's. I think these I got at Hobby Lobby though. Not quite sure. Hobby Lobby seems to be my favorite store of choice. So I would imagine it's either Hobby Lobby or Joann's. I try to boycott Joann as much as I can because their prices are a little bit more expensive. Um, but, um, pretty, pretty darn sure that it was Hobby Lobby that I picked it up at. And tomorrow is my day off. Tomorrow I am going to, um, go down and play with the ladies in Austin. So I'm excited about that. I have been able, I have not been able to do that, um, in the last couple weeks because I've been busy with work here. Um, and... So I need to get out and play with the ladies. And I love going down there because um, my friend Judy, my mentor, she's super talented. And every time I go down, she's got so many ideas and she's pumping them out for me. And I get, I come back with so much inspiration. And I love going down there and seeing what she's created. And I know she's been pumping out some projects because she's been texting me what she's been creating. And I just love it. So you can see I'm probably going in maybe more than 
maybe about a half inch. I, I was going to try to do that inch in between and gluing in between, but I'm going in a little bit closer um, to get that in. And you might have to assist it, you know, here or there along the way um, to get everything going in and holding in place. Like I said, I wish I had octopus hands that I had all these multiple hands holding things for me. But we don't have that, so we got to work with what God gave us. And work I am. Today's going to be a crafty marathon. It's kind of rainy here. So I was going to do that over the weekend and my youngest wanted me to go to bed and she was right. Mommy was a, mommy was tired, but she was watching out for mommy and she said, let's go to bed and let's watch a movie. So I did that. I went to bed and I watched a movie with my, my daughter. And um, yesterday we baked a cake and we were going to be baking some zucchini bread and banana bread today. But she says, um... She wanted to relax, so I said, okay, you relax, mommy's going to craft. So, I'm crafting, she's relaxing. So, I guess I do need another piece of wire, I didn't realize that. So, you'll, you'll need about four and a half inches, or four of those, um, sorry, four of those wire pieces to create your wing and then you can probably use some of that leftover to go in between just so that your wings are more movable and you can I bend them in shape um, so there's that some of those webs out of my hands That one in place, it doesn't want to. Doesn't want to glue up. Okay. Now this quilting one is, I, I think it's um, pretty thick, and I um, thought it'd be perfect for this because. Um, you don't want them to be too flimsy. Um, you want them to be thick enough that um, if you put it on a dress form, it'll stay without, um, and I'm just going to go kind of crisscross here. Holding it in place. Let me get this one here down right there. Of course, the worst part is, like I said, it's the glue whips. I get over those, right? We hold that in place with our little doodads here. I'm still waiting for those to get back into um, in stock. So, so once they come in, I will definitely let you guys know. All right. Snip that. So I was gonna crisscross it, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That much. I want to go half and half. One here and one here, maybe. Not that it's needed. Um, my other ones, I didn't do all this, but you know, you can. It's an option. Definitely not one that's needed. Okay, so get those down. Get, make sure you have plenty of glue in there so your uh, wire's not lifting up. Okay, so once you have that down, you're going to take your other piece that you already cut up and you're going to place that on top um, of your wing. Just like so and then you can use your sewing machine and go around and sew up those uh, edges leaving about a quarter inch seam allowance okay so we'll be back for that 
So once you have your two pieces sewn together, what you're going to do is you're going to take your trim or ribbon of choice and go around your um, wings. Now this here trim I picked up at Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to go right around the outside of the wings. Now I'm going to go and remember I said that um, I left like maybe a quarter inch seam allowance on this. Right hand is so I've got to move it this way. Um, and of course that is going that way. So we're going to go there and just, just go around maybe a quarter inch around the seam of these wings. And I'm just kind of gathering it up here and there um, to give it more of a flare. You know me with the flare. Again, you don't have to particularly do this part. You can just take your ribbon or whatever you want to do to accent the center of your um, wings. Um, I'm just doing this as a flare part. finger here so I'm not getting glue webs on my hands and just kind of tuck here and there you know wherever you need it gather it up just a bit again you don't have to do this part it's not necessary I'm just doing it because I wanted to give it more of a flare um, to these wings I'm just going to go all the way around until we get the entire wing done this way. Now I was saying, you know, when life gives you a bag of lemons, it's it's good to be able to take those that bag of lemon and creating um, lemonade with it. Sometimes it's a little bit more harder for some of us to, you know, to take that bag of lemon and um, make lemonade. It's a lot more harder. Um, some of us, um, you know, we've been through so much in our lives that we could take that bag of lemon and certainly make lemonade out of it. Um, but some of us, you know, it's we've been through so much that the struggles are so um, tremendous and it's a lot harder um, for some of us, especially if you constantly are getting a bag of lemon each time you turn around. So it's good that, you know, we have crafters out there and you know fellow crafters that want to get together and help another fellow crafter get through this hump grab that bag of lemon and just make some awesome lemonade out of it that one that will certainly leave you wanting more lemonade and that is what we've we've decided to do that we're gonna you know help this fellow crafter make some lemonade out of that bag of lemons and cheer her up so that is what this is all about, helping another crafter, fellow for crafter, um, get through the hurdles. And it's kind of it's kind of good to let you know to have a friend. We might not know each other personally, but we certainly know each other from the craft world, you know. And it's wonderful to help each other out when when we can. That's really really important. It's not about always getting getting getting. It's about wanting to help out someone else when you need it. So um, I'm certainly one of those that, you know, I like to help out. So, so let's help out. So I'm just going to go around the entire thing and I'll be back with it completely done. So now we have the um the outside of the wings completely decorated with some trim and now i'm going to take this other trim and just go around the inside of our heart now again we're going to be using hot glue now this process is not that much any different from any other projects that you're doing that um, requires glue 
So we're just going to start, you know, kind of gathering it up and just going it in. See, I, I've done a small little pleat just to begin. Now this one's a little bit thicker, so I have to certainly go in and pleat with a little bit more glue. But I'm just going to go right around like so on the wing here. <clears throat> and I'm making small little pleats as I'm going along. Make sure I clean that up. basically all we're going to be doing. The most, the most annoying part, as you guys already know, is the hot glue. You get all these little webs that are all over the place and just want to stick to you and don't want to leave. So that is the most annoying and hardest part. See, can't get rid of that. Once you get over that, it's a home run. So, like I said, so now we got this, and then I'm just going to go to the next row. And just keep doing that. Turn here. one down and then we'll go right back underneath that. You can lift that up just so much and then just go right in. Just slightly like you see I'm lifting it up and just go in. You don't have to go in all the way close because you don't want them, you know, you just want them to lay on top, one on top of the other, flat. So I have about, eh, about an inch in between, but you can eyeball it and I'm kind of curving it in. Uh, just eyeball it. It's up to preference and how you want to handle this part. Um, and I'm just going in right below it, giving it a small little pleat. And going from there. See that? So it lays flat just like that. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now, once you get over this here, it's going to be a longer stretch, but you got to do, you do have to cut here and there um, to get your trim in. And then just pleats. Although this is a gathered trim, you still, I'm still pleating it and kind of giving it more of a gathered fullness to it. So. And the hardest part is keeping that layered, the top layer, away from the bottom layer. So that's about, I'm going closer, a little closer in. So maybe a half inch in between each little layer. But again, that's by choice. You can do it however um, you want to do it. If you don't want to go in that close, that's fine. It's not, not a biggie. 
maybe anywhere from a half inch to an inch between layers. <clears throat> That's up to preference. <clears throat> And then just maybe my cleats are about a quarter inch in. So <clears throat> they're not very big cleats either. And once, once you lay it flat, you'll start seeing the fullness of it. And then, of course, here I'm going to trim and then go to the third layer. Sorry if my arm is in the way, but I want to give you an idea basically how I'm doing this. This is where my octopal, octopus arms come in handy because I need something to hold the other um, top layer down. And I don't have octopus hands, so it's kind of figuring it out. Okay, so then when you lay it flat, see it starts to look like that. And then um, here, what I could have done is gone right up here and up here. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and start over on this side and do the same thing. And I'm going right along that base of that one trim that I've laid down along the edge of my wings. Again, I have about a quarter inch pleat there. And you don't have to do that um, because it, it just, just, if you have a gathered trim like this one is, I mean, you don't have to really do that, but I have decided that's what I wanted to do. Gather, gather it up more so that it has more fullness. I'm sorry, I'm kind of stuttering here, I'm trying to figure out my wordings, but I think you guys get the idea. And I'm curving it to go around the the base of the, um, the perimeter of the heart. So, once you have this, it's so simple. Um, the hardest part, like I said, is probably um, the first couple layers, and then once you have those first couple layers, it's pretty quick, and then we'll start kind of giving a small little decor to it. You don't have to do a whole lot, um, but if you want it, these wings to hang, you want to add like a bow or something so that um, you can hang it or you can pin it to a dress form, whichever um, you prefer to do. So. Just kind of going around the curved part of the wings. Like I said, doing the layering part, the first two layers, maybe the third, it's a little bit more complex, but once you get it done, you'll be, you'll be happy with the results. will say that you will need plenty of trim for this because it does take a lot so I would I would say estimate about 10 10 yards that you're going to be using okay I'm 
go ahead and trim here, go on to my second layer. So now we're going to lift it up again like we did on the other one. And let me release some trim and lift. come up with a gadget that makes gives us extra arms when we're working with projects like this so that we can have um, more arms. I think that's necessary when you're a crafter to have more arms. can't imagine. how hard it would be to come up with another little gadget that helps you come up and hold these kind of things. But it'd be me. Anyway. Like I said, today is a rainy day, so we're going to be crafting. I was supposed to be crafting and doing a marathon this weekend, but I didn't. Um, <clears throat> came home, we were tired, and we're all like, let's just watch movies. So that's what we did. Having TV withdrawals, I think is what the kids were having. So this is about a half inch in from um, the top second, the first layer. And again, I'm just doing that quarter inch plate. Not a quarter inch plate, I would say. I eyeball everything. I don't measure anything. I just eyeball it. I mean, if I have to measure, I measure. If it's necessary to measure things, I measure. But um, generally speaking, I'm eyeballing. So. These are really fun. To make and you can just decorate your house or you know um, you have a dress form you want to add wings I made some smaller wings um, for one of my dolls and um, that I rescued and it gives it that added character to it but I'm going around just the um, curve of the wing. We had a good time on Saturday, all the ladies. And we were thinking about doing something like that on a daily basis where we hang out. Um, we're just trying to find a place that we can do it where there's not too much interruption or, um, you know, it's a lot easier, user friendly. People can get in without a problem because that's the biggest problem is figuring out the platform and trying to get it in. It does take us a while to figure that out. And um, we're just trying to figure out a place that we can hang out and meet. All right. So we have that. Okay, see, all nice and gathered. It's pretty. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to go ahead here <clears throat> and do this little area here. And I just kind of did a small little pleat, folded it back, and um, I'm going in just around. 
that curve of the wing. And you can make these wings out of um, whatever size you want. Just, you know, with my larger wings, what I did is I, I jointed um, bigger pieces of chipboard and I just kind of um, attached it together. And that's how I made my bigger wings. Um, but again, you know, you can make them whatever size you want. And I'll be happy to share my pattern with you that I cut out. Just send me a message and I will be happy to share that with you. I'm running out of my um, my glue that goes in a row. So I'm going to have to get to Hobby Lobby tomorrow, which I will I'll be with the ladies tomorrow. Tomorrow is my crafting day, and I definitely need that. Definitely, definitely need that. Now that all the glue webs out, we're going to go straight across and straight across is a lot easier than actually cutting in pieces here and there. So that's going to be a lot more easier and it'll go more smoother once you have that. But as you can see, I'm gathering it because I want more of a fuller effect on these wings, but you can do it however you want. You don't have to do it this way. And again, I'm doing, um, about a half inch to an inch on on below each layer um, but you don't have to you don't have to and if you want to clip those back or find something to clip those back that's fine um, no Like I said, it's a half inch to a half. And here I'm not going to um, go in that many pleats, but I will be having the pleats to make it more fuller within the body. You can start at the bottom, but um, when you start at the bottom, you're still going to have that problem where um, you had to curve up. So I like starting in the top and making sure that top is taken care of. So, throw that in because I got all these glue webs. Look at that massive glue webs. And connect to your nails. Turn it this way so I can see what I'm doing. This one's back. I'm just going to keep going right around. Once I get to the other edge, I'll clip and then I'll start to the fourth row. Make that up.
eight. Sorry, right, ladies, got to turn. But you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we're going to come back, and when we're done, we'll come back. We'll have it completely finished, and then we'll start um, adding little decors to make it a lot more prettier. As you can see, I have several layers going on here, and what I just basically um, am doing is I pleat a little, and as I get down closer to the bottom, um, I plead a little less, but as you can see, I just put a, um, a line of glue and um, I'll pleat and then I'll come back in to that pleat and glue underneath where that pleat will stay flat, just like that. Hold it down and I'll go and put another bit of glue down. Again, it's about half inch to an inch um, from the layer above to the layer below. See that? You can see that? About a, it's about a half, half an inch to an inch, closer to an inch. And then I'm still going around the shape of the top layer and the shape of the wing and then as I get around those curves I make sure I get them really good making sure that um, I'm staying within that curve Now that does have a little bit of a binding on it, this trim, so um, it makes it a lot cleaner edge and a lot easier. So you can see that, but just kind of tucked it under. And then I'm going to go back in here in between that pleat and glue it down. Being careful that you don't see really the, the glue. And being careful that my top layer doesn't glue down as well. That's important. That's why you have to use all those fingers as much as you can possibly get in. Use them to hold back. And then I'll come back and I'll um, unravel some of this and we'll go again and I'm just gonna fold it back a little and then go about an inch in and just go all the way across just like I did now okay now we're getting down to the bottom where the bottom of the wings are and what I just do is I pretty much cut um, based on the width of the bottom and then I kind of tuck like that um, a small piece and then I glue it down on the bottom of the wing just like so. Um, and that kind of gives it more of a body down there. And we keep with the flow of what we're currently doing, which is the gathering. Although this, like I said, this trim does have, um, let's see, does have a gather. I went ahead and pleated and gathered more for more of a fuller flare in um, the body of the, the wing. So we'll do it just like that. Again, there's about a half inch to an inch um, here. And the closer we get to the bottom, the less um, 
we have to do on these pleats. And then our last one. Got all those glues in my hand. We'll go down here again, closer to the edge. And let me go ahead and glue this here. I forgot to do that. Just like that. And glue it down just like so. Okay, so we have that one done and then we'll do the same thing over here. Again, cut a trim, piece of trim. And I kind of fold it as you, up here it's a little longer or wider. So I make this part here a little bit wider and I pleat it, pleat it and put in about an inch going up and I lift that piece up and I glue it down. Make sure you get that in there good. And give it another piece. Put it in. It's a little bit wider here still, so I'm going in a little wider and then about an inch. And then just kind of glue it down. Cut more. Again, we're trying to stay within the um, shape of the, the wing and the curves. So that's important that we try to stay within those curves. about an inch down from the top layer and go in. Now I'm kind of making sure also it has that gather because we have all that fullness from the top and we want to make sure you continue that pattern. Now had I not done that then it would have been you know a little bit more simplified but I wanted more fullness. Um, and so we have to kind of stay with that pattern all the way through. And again, about an inch. Go down in. See that? Uh, we probably have about two more that we can put this one and another more. Yep, put in another one, one more, and then it'll be done. We can start decorating this baby. Cut another piece and fold over. Just 
just like so. And turning down. Going down, down, down. Just make sure we missed a spot there. Get it all completely in. So now you have that going in for what? See how full it is? And then in the center here, we can come in and maybe clean out the edges with a little bit of a trim. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe just do some of the edging here, not all of it, because I don't have to go all the way through, just up here where it's no, more noticeable. And this is a Hobby Lobby um, find that I got at 50%. And um, it's got cording and beads and so it's perfect for an edging on this here um, project that I'm making for a lovely lady so I'm going to go ahead and do that just about um, on the top half here of these wings and then we'll come back and we'll make it pretty for her and it's just a nice beautiful cording that um, gives it up finishes up those raw edges just like so okay. and when you finish at the end make sure you get plenty in there because once you cut this off I don't, sometimes it might unrattle so what I do, let's go ahead and put some tape there before I even cut wrap up some tape and just glue that down and then I will do the same thing over here down here and up to that point there And I'm not concerned that right here because right there I'll probably put something that just um, cover up the raw edging as well. So you'll see what I do. We will see. So clean that up nicely. And once we have it all cleaned up nice and all the edges um, cleaned up, we'll come through and we'll start adding all the finishing touch to finish our wings here. And grab some of this here, tape. That way it doesn't come all the way undone. And then we'll finish off there. Just like so. We have that. See? I cleaned it up really nice. So here comes here comes the fun part of this whole entire process. Now we get to decorate it just a little bit. Um, this is a piece of fabric I picked up at Joanne Fabrics, and it's almost like a stretchy mesh. Not well, not not really stretchy, not too stretchy, but it's a mesh. And I cut a strip that's about two inches wide, and I did the same thing for this fabric that I also picked up at Joanne's, and it comes in like that. Um, and then I cut a piece of sari ribbon, and these are about a yard and a half, and then I have sari yarn. So I have all four together tied up, and then we're going to make a bow. Let's get it all cut up. I'm using these in, and I always double it up like that. And then I wrap it just like so. And because it's so full, we'll have all kinds of layers of different things going on once we 
get it. Well, let me make it a little bit wider, maybe. Let's see if I get two around. No. So we're just going to make about one huge one, just like so. And I'm not too concerned, you know, whether or not I have long pieces, short pieces, or if they're evened out. Because this is a shabby um, bow. And I put it in between my ring finger and my middle finger. And I tie that up like that. Now we get a bundle like that. And then down here, I'll just trim this out. Again, I'm going for the shabbiness. I'm not going for, you know, it has to be perfectly cut. No, um, I totally love the shabbiness of it not being so perfectly uniformed. So now we're going to trim this off. And once you open those all up, you have all kinds of different yummy layers of uh, ribbon and lace and different textures of it. See that? And then you can put that like so in the center of this as soon as I get that wire out of the way. And that'll go. Make sure I get it all right here and we'll move this here. Seems like this one wants to go over here, so let's move this over here. Make it easier for us since it wants to go over there. Okay. It's a shabby mess. <laughs> Alright, so now we have this. And we're going to put that just like so in the center there. Right there. And before we do that, I always want to play around and see what else I want to put back there. So we're going to play around because you just never know what I want to do. And I wanted to give it a different look. So we're going to go with that. And I have all these other little pieces here. That we're going to add as accents to the back of this bow. And I'm just trying to decorate the doily that's in the back. And it's a vintage piece of doily that I picked up at um, um, eBay. And I'll have to say it's been over um, two years since I've had it. So I'm not sure what eBay seller sold it to me but it's been a while so we're kind of going to decorate that there with another piece here and this kind of gives it more of a um, touch as you may say it and it also cleans up my desk of something that was sitting here and needed to have a purpose so it is very helpful when I can clean these up from my desk Typically speaking, I would use my smaller shears for this um, to trim around the edging. And move that out of the way. And then we'll have beautiful edging. I'm going to move this here so that I can accent that there. I like to try to pick up what I have laying around here on my desk. I 
and giving it a purpose. So I'm just kind of let my glue gun cooperate and the glue stick goes in like it's supposed to. We're just trying to glue those edges down so that it, they don't lift up once I put the bow in. I like to clean up my work um, and, you know, making sure everything is where it needs to go. Picky like that, I guess. And I just kind of go around making sure it is down and secure and good to go. Okay. Okay, that should do it. And then once we have that trim some of this edging here of the mesh from the wedding dress applique I had here. Bring this back up. Make sure that's how I want it. And get my little bow there because I wanted to see some of that edging there. Looks like that. Yep. And so now we're going to take this I'm going to glue it right down on that. I'm going to make sure I put a good amount in there to make sure this bow does not go anywhere. And stick it right down in the center. Just like so. Then I have this little piece here that I'm going to put there. And then I have this earring that was from one of the previous kits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here, put my earring through there, and turn it around a little bit more. I'll go ahead and put the covering on it, the backing of the earring on if I can. Just like so, make sure it stays in place. I'm going to trim some of that wire. And it's going to go just like that here. But before I do that, I want this little piece here. And I hope my friend is really happy with this piece here that I'm making for her. Just like that. Okay. And then that will go in the center of this here, just like that. And I gotta put plenty because this has a little bit of a groove in the bottom. And I'll stick that right dead smack in the middle. I'll straighten out my bow. And like I said, this is a really shabby bow for me, um, and I love them like that, the fuller, full with different textures and layers, different layers of stuff, you know, that to me is a shabby bow. And there we go. And then that's going to go just like so here, but before we do that, before we put that smack in the center there, um, what we're going to do is make a backing so that if she decides she wants to hang it on her wall, she can do that. And for that, we're going to go ahead and take um, some seam binding. And I'm just going to tie a bow, or not a bow, a knot. Need two knots just in case. And that'll go smack down there, and that way she can hang it however she wants. 
And we can also hide it this way. And then she can hang it like that. So I think that's what we're going to do so we can hide that knot. And that's right smack in the middle of your wings here. And then once that's done, we're going to glue this down. And we're putting quite a bit of glue here. And this is quite a bit of a long video. And I do apologize for that. Sure, I get that down there and there. So I'm just kind of pressing down. I'm going to lift up now and get where I missed. So that it stays put. Make sure I don't glue down my tails on my bow. That way I know that this is not going to go anywhere. So there we have it, a nice, beautiful, shabby chic wing that it's made um, for a lovely friend. Um, and it's going some, having some hard times, and um, I hope she enjoys this tutorial, and I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial, and I hope she enjoys her little wings that I've made for her. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. God bless.